120 additional sexual assault lawsuits to be filed against Sean Diddy Combs. You heard that right, 120. I feel like one of those announcers during the darts, 120, like fucking hell. If you didn't think he was over, it's over now. Especially when you find out that one of the victims was as young as 9 and 14. It's a wrap. Turn off his lights. Turn off his lights. One was as young as 19 and 14. Fucking hell. And if I'm not mistaken, they've also set up a fucking um, a line for you to call. We represent thousands of survivors of abuse. And never, ever in a 10-day period... Have we seen over 3,000 people come forward where we've confirmed and decided to investigate and represent 120 people while we're continuing to work through another 100 plus cases to prove them up, to validate what has happened here, and to hold those that are responsible accountable. And so like Tony said, we've set this up. It's 1-800-200-7474. I have a team of people standing by literally if you know that this happened to someone and you have information about it, please contact us. If this happened to you, come forward. There's attorney-client privilege here. What you tell us is in confidence. Yes, we'll have to go out and build your case, but we will protect you. And the other thing that I want to say is the pattern and practice of this, again, is unprecedented. Over 30-plus years of the same sort of events happening. People thrust into the circle reportedly and horrible things happening to them as a result. And from talking to these people that have come forward these past 10 days, I can tell you unequivocally that because the federal government did what it needed to do and indicted this man, that they put him in jail and a judge kept him in jail, they tell me directly, this validates my feelings. For so long, I thought it was my fault. What is it about me that put myself in that scenario? What was I wearing at the time? What did I do to be subjected to such horrific treatment at these people that I was trying to trust? Well, we know now it was not your fault. You were victimized by a group of powerful people that operated for 30 plus years, taking advantage of their wealth, and the power that they held within the music industry. So again, thank you to every single person that has come forward and contacted our office over the past 10 days. If you or someone you know suffered the same sort of treatment, please contact us at the number behind me and we will help you. They set up a hotline. If you've got an accusation against Diddy and you want it to be kind of vetted and kind of, you know, explored and maybe added to the other 120 lawsuits, they've got a hotline you can ring. A hotline. A Diddy freak off victim hotline. Fucking wild. Oh my God. So, Kirsty Washington Post. A team of lawyers announced on Tuesday they will be filing more than 100 sexual assault lawsuits against Sean Diddy Combs, a massive legal action that appears to have few, if any, precedent in the Me Too era. The lawsuits would, exp would exponentially increase the number of sexual abuse allegations accusation sorry against the embattled music producer commonly known by his stage name diddy so this is the first so even more so than weinstein who probably has loads of victims and you know people have always said with weinstein which i believe too that most likely because he was a man of his word oddly enough if he did if he did suck his horrible fat dick then he would actually put you in a movie so a lot of people were reluctant to come forward because he actually did help them with their careers but in diddy's case a lot of the stuff was scummy a lot of the stuff was abusive a lot of stuff was manipulative a lot of stuff involved like drugging and raping all this sort of madness so there's legit victims out there and i think i read one report where a lot of the people were basically saying the same line where they were invited to the studio to make music imagine that that, that that's that is a that's the thing that's kind of broke my heart the most because i feel like if you're involved in that sort of like kink lifestyle in that alternative sex play lifestyle exhibition lifestyle and things went a bit left i would say you can understand it but you know there's sort of like that path isn't the most safest you know there's gonna you're gonna run into some issues along the way you have to keep your head in a swivel but you can understand why those issues would happen in that sort of like world but 
I felt the worst for people who allegedly were reached out to by a member of Diddy's team to work on music. Went to go work on music, took one sip of a drink, woke up and then had no panties on. That sort of shit is dark beyond dark. Like, I feel so bad for people like that. My heart breaks. Like, you legitimately go for one thing that has nothing to do with the other thing and then you wake up and you've been abused. You think so anyway. You're not too sure because you've been drugged with ketamine and GHB and shit. It's like, oh my God. The biggest sick in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all was finally being revealed to the world, says Tony Busby, one of the lead attorneys at the Houston News Conference. The wall of science has now been broken. Jesus Christos, they're going hard. The wall of science has been broken. Plaintiffs will also be represented by Andrew Van Arsdale, who previously represented hundreds of victims of sexual abuse allegations, um, lawsuit, sorry, against Boy Scouts in America. Wow. He called the forthcoming filings unprecedented in scope in the interview Washington Post. Van Arsdale said Combs' alleged victims include roughly equal number of men and women who ranged in ages between 9 and 38 at the time of the attacks. The alleged assaults span 20-year period from the 2000s to the 2010s when Combs was the height of his popularity. The victims felt compelled to come forward after Combs was arrested in the nine bond last month. Van Arsdale said, explaining that the criminal charges validated their experiences after many victims spent years blaming themselves. The victims range in age from nine years old to 38 years old at the time of the attacks. It's over. It's over. The only people I've seen, and I've, I'm not going to lie, maybe it's the... Maybe it's the contrarian in me, but I've actually legitimately enjoyed listening to people try to defend Diddy, especially within like the black hip hop podcast space, predominantly like podcasts like Joe Budden's podcast. Hearing people like Ish try and defend Diddy has been interesting to listen to because I feel like a lot of the defense of Diddy is mostly down to him being rich and famous. It's not really down to people actually thinking he didn't do it. It's more so like, oh, he's rich and famous. So why would he need to do that? Everybody involved was in on it. Everybody involved was down. And now because he's down himself, they're seeing an opportunity to kind of get some money. That's the kind of thing they're going with. And it's like, maybe you could have said, maybe you, maybe there's a, weirdly enough, right? As toxic as this may sound, that's actually an angle you could realistically go down or path you could go down with Cassie. Even though she's an actual legit victim and we've seen video proof of her being beaten up by Diddy, if you wanted to do the whole like, oh, they're just in it for the money, you could do that with Cassie in a weird way. It would actually hold more weight with her because she was with him for ages. You could maybe say, oh, she turned a blind eye to a lot of the abuse. She was okay with it at the time because it was paying her bills. Allegedly, there's a story that she was writing and she was planning to write a tell-all book and then did he refuse to pay her out for it, which is why she filed a lawsuit in the first place. Like you could actually point to her as being maybe money hungry and doing it for the wrong reasons. But once everybody else lawsuits comes out, and you start to read what they actually went through, I don't think that you could kind of continue on with that defense. It starts to sound like, nah, the Diddy that we knew in public was one guy. The Diddy that we knew that put out music was one guy. But the Diddy behind the closed scenes, behind closed doors, was a completely different person. That's what we're getting now. We're getting the reality of the matter that he was literally two different people. We saw this one side of him and another side of him. And I also hate people who are out there saying, oh, I always knew. I always knew. No, you didn't. Most of us didn't. No, you didn't. Fuck off, you didn't. That's why he was able to manipulate and con and deceive and abuse and hurt and violate so many people over those years because he's clearly good at playing, you know, two different sides and having two different faces. No one kind of knew. Wild. No one fucking knew. And a lot of people probably enabled it. And that's what I also want to see. I also want to see, as much as it's important that he goes down, it's also important that the people that enabled it go down too. The people that worked in labels who were fucking organizing, you know, taxi rides and airport transfers and shit for fucking people that were coming down, clearly down to have fucking freak offs or didn't know they're having freak offs, especially if they were like underage and shit. You deserve to go down also. If you're the one fucking not giving somebody a heads up, not telling them, hey, don't come down or giving them a fucking little note or something, just letting them go and walk through those doors, knowing clearly what was going on on the other side was going to be fucking hurtful. Like you deserve to go down also, I would say. But again, what do I know? It continues. Van Alsdell said that 100 individual lawsuits will be filed in New York, California, and Florida beginning within the next month. Erica Wolf, 
An attorney for Combs denied the allegations in a statement on Tuesday saying, as Mr. Combs' legal team has emphasized, he cannot address every meritless allegation in what has become a reckless media circus. That said, Mr. Combs emphatically, categorically denies all as false, defamatory, any claim that he sexually abused anyone, including minors. He looks forward to proving his innocence and vindicating himself in court where the truth will be established based on evidence or speculation. The problem is about this, let's say, let's say in 120, some people are lying, which is possible. Most likely, if you're a law firm and you are deciding to take on so many cases, you're going to try to vet most of these accounts as much as, as, as well as you can. You're going to try to make sure they're watertight because when it goes to court, it can, you know what I mean? It could go fucking crazy. You don't, you don't want to, you don't take any chances. But let's say there are some people in those 120 who are lying. How many? 120 lawsuits. How many are lying? Half? More than half? That still leaves 20%, 30% of the people that are true, which is still a lot. So it's like, yes, yeah, some of it might be lies, but there's one too many. That's bad enough already as it is. You have to prove without reasonable doubt that all of it is lies, which is not, because we've seen video evidence of what you've done. We've heard other accounts of what you've done through the other lawsuits. So clearly you've done some bad shit and been a, uh, you know, so this defense that you've not done anything, it's just, it's not going to run anymore. If anything, it'll probably get worse when it gets to court because a lot of the things is going to be, you know, available to see and shit. You have to present a lot of the evidence that they found for the reasons why they're suing the guy in the first place. So um, if ever there was a time to settle, it'll be now, you'd imagine. So I'm wondering, will we maybe see, did he settle soon? Will we maybe see him go for a plea deal soon? just to avoid all this shit coming out because it's getting already dark as it is. We're hearing about nine-year-olds and 14-year-olds. Imagine how much more dark it will get once we hear like the gory adult details about it. <sighs> the alleged assaults ha happened primarily in New York, either in Manhattan or the Hamptons, as well as Los Angeles, Miami. Bowsby said at the news conference, they took place at well-known venues, hotels, private residencies, including holiday parties, album release celebrations. Assaults also allegedly to have occurred at auditions and Combs famous well-attended white party which was held regularly in the early aughts so he was doing this during the white parties Jesus Christ so while people were enjoying you know the fucking finger foods on the main dance floor doing their thing behind the scenes people were literally like screaming for help and shit but it's probably being muffled out by the noise and whatnot oh yeah 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 the day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names, says Budby. The names that we're going to name, assuming our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. I'm talking there, I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, and egged it on. They know who they are. And you know what's funny about those names that they name? I bet you the names that they name are going to be the ones are gonna be the ones are gonna be the ones are gonna be the ones who are the most virtue signally typed the ones that are always talking about helping people the ones that are always fucking tweeting some sort of fucking hashtag i bet you those are the ones that are going to be named those are the main ones that are going to be named. i bet you according to busby more than half of the alleged victims reported their assault to police at the hospital Toxicology reports found that some of the alleged victims had horse tranquilizers in their systems, he said. Combs and his accusers, so and his associates, will also uh, be accused in these lawsuits, threatening victims to stay silent and doling out $10,000 in hush money payments. Most of the alleged victims are African American, nearly a third are white, and Busby said of the alleged 120 alleged victims, 25% are, are minors. 25% of minors at the time the alleged assaults, some of the alleged victims have been in contact with the FBI. Combs has also generally denied all allegations, all, all accusations against him, has previously been sued for sexual assault nearly a dozen times by women. Jesus Christ. Busby and Van, Arn and Van Arsdale law firms called for potential victims to come forward after the arrest. Over 10 days, they received more than 3,000 responses, said Van Arsdale with the team of lawyers narrowed that number down to more than 100 cases that they were able to corroborate and considered credible. On top of the violent sexual assaults and sexual abuse, lawyers said that they planned to accuse Combs of facilitating sex with controlled substances, false imprisonment, dissemination of video recordings, and sexual abuse of minors. Oh my God. 
Van Alsdale told the Washington Post that he struck, that he struck um, by the similarities and the accusations. Many of the alleged victims were trying to break into the music industry when they received an invitation to an event hosted by Combs, he said. He said that the lawsuits will name a number of co-defendants, including members of Combs' family, recording labels, event venues, and other partygoers, while attorneys um, didn't share any details about the alleged associates during the news conference. Van Arsdell told the Post that they include household names. Busby told reporters that he planned to pursue anyone, anyone who participated in any way in the alleged assaults, including anyone who happened to be present at the time and did not report or stop it. Many of the sexual assault lawsuits filed against Combs within the year contain details of alleged drugging, trafficking, and often at parties. These accusations of physical and sexual assaults go back to the early 90s to nearly the present day. Notable accusers include two of the Combs family artists, Cassandra Ventura and Dawn Richard, as well as producer Rodney Little Rod. Jesus Christ. Let's see, man. Let's see how it plays out. Let's see how it plays out. Absolutely shocking state of affairs. Really fucking is. But if you didn't think it was over for Diddy, it's actually over, over. 120 additional sexual assault lawsuits, plus whatever more they're going to get off of that phone line. Wow. Absolutely wow. What a fall from grace. What an absolute crazy fall from grace. Let's see how it pans out. Let's see how it pans out. Probably not good, though. Probably not good though. You know what I mean? Probably not good.